Okay, so welcome everybody to uh, the lesson 15 video on piecewise functions. This is the um, first video starting the un new unit of uh, piecewise functions, and we're going to kind of delve into those functions today. Um, uh, just kind of the tip of the iceberg type thing for today. Um, but let's start off with some uh, opening exercises here. Uh, it's uh, classwork, so we'll just pretend that, uh, you know, this is what you're going to be doing at home. All right. Um, so uh, the directions say for the opening exercise, for each real number A, the absolute value of A is the distance between 0 and A on the number line and is denoted uh, by absolute value of A. That's what uh, that means there. That's the absolute value of A. Um, that, that, in essence, is the definition of absolute value. Okay, that is what the absolute value is. Um, so let's solve, uh, let's solve each, let's solve each one variable equation. All right, so for letter A here, um, we have the absolute value of X equals 6. All right, so how do we solve an absolute value equation here? Well, basically, if you think about the values of X here um, that could fit, X could equal um, negative 6, and X could equal positive 6. All right. Um, if you think about plugging those values into that function here, uh, you know, when I plug in negative 6 there, it gives me 6, and obviously so does positive 6. So hence, x equals negative 6 and x equals positive 6 are the two solutions for letter A. All right, and that's a really important point um, because that's we're going to use that same concept to solve B and C, which are a little bit more complicated. So let's take a look at B here. We have absolute value of x minus 5 equals 4. Okay, um, so to solve that, I actually need to solve x minus 5 equals 4, and then I have to solve x minus 5 equals negative 4, okay? Um, which, if you look at what we did over in A, it's the same, um, it's, it's following, we're following the same idea, okay? So when I solve the left equation here, I'm going to add 5 to both sides, and I get x equals 9. On the, right, on the right equation here, I add 5 to both sides, but I get x equals 1. So I actually have two very different answers there. Um, I have x equals 9 and x equals 1. And remember, whenever you're solving an equation, I always, you know, you, you could check outright, or I like to just quick do a little mental check. When I plug in 9 for the equation here, 9 minus 5 gives me 4, and of course the absolute value of 4 is 4. When I plug in 1, Okay, 1 minus 5 is negative 4, absolute value of negative 4 is 4, so those are my two solutions. All right, moving right along, i got to try and keep pace here because, um, you know, this is a rather lengthy lesson and we don't want to make it too long for you guys at home. <clears throat> Not that you guys have anything better to do. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Of course you have something better to do. But uh, anyways, all right. I'm, I'm really the one that doesn't have anything better to do, as you can see here, because I am doing this right now. All right, moving on. Um, letter C. Uh, 2 times the absolute value of x plus 3 equals negative 10. So um, solving that, <clears throat> I don't quite set it equal to... Um, uh, actually, here, let me see here. Oh, I see that I've done something foolish. Um, all right, so when I go to solve this, you know, you can go ahead and divide both sides by 2. Okay, divide both sides by 2, I get absolute value of x plus 3 equals negative 5. <clears throat> okay, now, when I think about that, okay, um, solving that, I come, I, I come to a little bit of an issue here because an absolute value of something cannot be negative. So when I'm taking the absolute value of x plus 3 there, and I'm setting equal to negative 5, um, you know, that's just never going to happen. I mean, how can, we, how can we get an absolute value to be negative? I mean, 
you know, let's just say you did happen to solve this. Let's say you subtract 3 from both sides, subtract 3, subtract 3. So I'm going to get x equals negative 8. Now, if you think about plugging that negative 8, okay, into the solution, we, in fact, get negative 5 as my absolute value, okay? Just bear with me here. So a negative 5. The absolute value of negative 5, however, is not negative 5. It's 5. So there is no solution for letter C. No solution. You can't have a negative absolute value um, unless if you ever had something like this. Negative, uh, let's just say x plus 3 equals negative 10 there. Okay, now that can be solved because I would divide this by negative 1 first, divide this whole thing by negative 1, divide this by negative 1, I get x plus 3 equals 10. Now we're back to the positive realm, which of course can be solved. So, you know, make no mistake, whenever they say absolute values can never be negative, there is a, you know, you can get a negative answer, but when you take the absolute value of something, you are finding a distance. And uh, distance cannot be negative. Therefore, absolute value of x always equals a positive value, a positive real. Okay? Um, uh, and like I said, if you put a negative out front, well, of course, that changes things. But the idea of the absolute value being a distance is always um, something you should, you should understand. <clears throat> Okay, and of course, when, we, when I say distance, I'm saying distance on the number line right here between 0 and A on the number line. Okay, so there's a little intro. Um, moving right along. Determine at least five solutions for each two-variable equation. Make sure some of the solutions include negative values for either X or Y. So we're going to go pretty quick here. Um, uh, some solutions for this, we'll call it uh, X and Y. Um, we can go negative 1, 0, 1 for this guy, um, and that's, of course, the absolute value of negative 1. You know, if I was doing this, um, y equals absolute value of negative 1. So then y would equal 1, of course, because uh, 1 equals absolute value of negative 1. So this is 1. Absolute value of 0 is 0. Absolute value of 1 is 1. So there's some values for that. All right, some values for b. Um, um, we could do, let's just say this, x, y. Let's do negative 1, 0, 1, 2. <clears throat> um, let me think here. Let me think here. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we're going to have, if we plug in negative 1, absolute value of negative 1 minus 5 is the absolute value of negative 6, which is 6. So negative 1 is going to give me an absolute value of 6. Negative 2, oh sorry, 0, 0 minus 5 is going to give me uh, negative 5. Let's do that one over here. 0 minus 5 is going to give me uh, absolute value of negative 5, which is 5. Okay, so 0, 5. Um, 1 is going to give me absolute value, sorry, absolute value of 1 minus 5, which is going to give me uh, negative 4 absolute value, which is 4, okay, so 1, 4, and 2 is going to give me 3, and then um, 3 is going to give me 2, um, etc. So there's some values there. And then last but not least, um, this this function, or this, um, this equation here, x equals absolute value of y, this is a little funky here. All right, be careful, because we're used to this x, y uh, input, output idea, but what you actually want to be inputting here is y values. So let's use some y values, um, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Uh, th you can do 3 down there, too. Um, negative 3, um, absolute value, so the x value is going to be 3, because the absolute value of negative 3, meaning the y value, is going to equal 3. So the x value, the output is actually the x value, which is 3. All right, absolute value negative 2 is 2. Absolute value negative 1 is 1. Absolute value 0 is 0. Absolute value 1 is 1. Absolute value 2 is, is 2. So there is um, that. There's some sample values there. 
Okay. Um, so now what they want us to do is graph these. So real quick, let's graph these. Okay. Um, letter A was the absolute value of y equals the absolute value of x. All right. So x, y. Um, we'll do uh, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. <clears throat> absolute value of negative 4 is 4. Absolute value of negative 3 is 3. 2, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. Pretty straightforward. So we're plotting that. Negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Negative 3, 1, 2, 3. Negative 2, 2, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. Okay. I go ahead and plot, um, you know, that. Okay. And that. Oh, that line wasn't that good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete that. Oh, wait, I can't. That's right. This thing is uh, annoying. All right. Um, actually, let's try this one. Okay. Undo. And it undo, and it undo. Okay, good. All right, one more try. Let's see if I can get that better. Uh, okay, a little better. All right, there's that uh, absolute value. Of course, we'll label y equals absolute value of x. All right, and you can put these arrows there. Okay. Um, now, for letter B, the function was uh, y equals absolute value of x minus 5. Okay. So, we're graphing that, okay, um, and uh, so this will be x and y, okay, and uh, I'm going to use 0 to 10 here, um, that's my value, so I'm going to use, I'll do negative 1, so negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, that's good, I'll use that, okay. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that, you'll see, okay, but I happen to know that this absolute value here, I happen to know that this absolute value um, is uh, absolute value V that is shifted to the right, that's shifted to the right, um, and I know that because uh, I'm simply a genius, okay, we've, est we've talked about this in class before, and um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure everybody can agree on that. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, just one thing over here on this left graph, by the way. I, I want you to understand that that is the, th this section here. You don't have to write this down. But that V is going through the origin. All right. Um, okay. So, <clears throat> moving on. Plotting this. Okay. Uh, putting, putting in my X value, negative 1 minus 5 is going to give me negative 6. Of course, the absolute value of negative 6 is positive 6, so this is going to be 6. Um, 0 is going to give me negative 5, which, of course, the absolute value of that is 5. 1 is going to give me negative 4, which, of course, is 4. 3, 2, 1, 0, 1, 2 is what that outputs are going to be there. And so I'll plot that. Negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, 0, 5, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 2, 1, 2, 3, uh, 3, 2, 4, 1, 5, 0, 6, 1, 7, 2, 8, 3, 9, 4, 10, 5, etc. And there is this absolute value, which of course is y equals absolute value of x minus 5. Alright. There's that. Okay, any questions? Oh, that's right. You can't ask any. Okay. All righty. Um, so, moving on. Th those are two. Those are absolute value graphs. They look like Vs. Okay? Uh, just real quick. Okay? The big concept, the big misconception that a lot of students... Eh, I, I shouldn't say that. The big mistake that students make with absolute values, okay, is they don't plot the V. You, you have to understand this big fact, okay? Um, for all intents and purposes, for, for everything that we're going to do, the absolute value graph is going to look like a V. So I always say absolute, absolute value looks like a V, the value, V, V. So make sure you get a V. Um, 
what I want you what I want you to try and f understand here okay is let's say you were plotting B here okay let's focus on B and let's say you weren't a genius like myself and you didn't know that this graph shifted to the right five units so more than likely you're going to plot from negative five to five so I want you to see what kind of graph I'll, I'll plot it here for you okay I'll change my color Ooh, look at all these sweet colors I'll do strawberry um, what I'm gonna plot here is what you would plot if you plotted negative five to five and this is what you would plot okay you would plot this Oh, strawberry was not a good choice oh let's we're done with strawberry there let's go back to our boring colors and we'll do this I see that my students have been messing with the board but hey okay so here's what you would plot if you plotted um, negative 5 to 5 well, I'm, plot, I'm plotting it in orange okay that's what you would plot okay and you'd think hey that's fine and dandy I'm just gonna draw that line and there is the line y equals absolute value of x minus 5 it's right there there it is I plotted it of course the problem is you didn't actually plot y equals absolute value of x minus 5 you plotted y equals x minus 5 okay because you did not continue your domain you did not use an expansive enough x domain right here okay see how expansive that is from negative 1 to 7 why did I do that well because I knew it shifted to the right and I wanted to get the V component of um, the graph if you do not plot the V component of an absolute value graph um, you didn't really graph an absolute value okay all right that I, that was a little bit of a ramble but, but what are you gonna do it was worth it uh, okay moving on we got the last graph here which is of who um, X equals absolute value of Y this is quite the interesting graph okay um, and just real quick what that's gonna look like is um, do the table okay I'm just gonna I'm just going to kind of move now because I don't want to take up too much of your time. Uh, 1, 1, 1, negative 1, 2, 2, 2, negative 2, 3, 3, 3, negative 3. Again, we're inputting y values, outputting is x. So the 0, 0 value works. Absolute value of 0, 0. Absolute value of 1 is 1. So we're still getting this component here. Okay. But what's interesting is what about... Um, one negative one. Let's plot that. One negative one. That goes right there. Okay, we're plotting that point. Two negative two, three negative three, four negative four, five negative five, six negative C. So this is what you end up getting. Okay, so you end up getting this sideways V. Uh, oops, it's not Y equals. It's X equals absolute value of Y. Uh, and of course, your calculator is not capable of graphing. Um, that because your calculator can only graph in the form y equals so um, anyways uh, there is that function uh, sorry it's not a function though uh, that's that's the equation x equals absolute value of y of course it's not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test because x values um, have two y values for example the x value of one as you can see here the x value of one has a value uh, the x value of 1 has an output of 1 and also negative 1. So x, um, sorry, 1 goes to 1, but it also goes to negative 1, therefore it's not a function. All right. So comparing and contrasting some of these graphs, um, of the three solution sets, um, what we have, um, j just as a, a, a message, and you can get some more detail on this on the completed notes, but the bottom line is that um, you know the graphs are all um, examples of absolute values, okay? Um, but this last one here for letter C was rotated 90 degrees, and as I said, it, it's not an example of a function. The other two were functions. You know, the one was just a regular V, and the other one was you know the one was just a regular V like that and the other one was shifted to the right those are still functions but this last one letter C is not a function okay um, 
the you might say the vertex of this graph here the vertex shifted to the right five units uh, which was the main difference okay um, moving right along here Consider the function f of x equals absolute value of x, where x can be any real number. Explain the meaning of function f in your own words. Okay. f. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, f is defining... f is... f is the function that takes the absolute value value of the input okay i mean that's it's about as straightforward as you could say. And just remember that the absolute value is actually the distance from zero on the number line. So if I input two, the distance is two. If I input negative two, the distance is still two. Okay? So what's the domain and range of f of x equals absolute value of x? Okay? Well, my domain. What could what could I put in for my x values? All right. What can I put in for max values? Well, there's there's really no limit to what you can put in. Okay, um, x is real. All right, it, you can put in negatives, you can put in positives, d uh, decimals, irrational numbers, whatever. You can put anything in. But the range, i.e., um, what f of x will equal, okay, is not. Um, anything okay the range is um, we'll say f of x is real such that f of x is greater than or equal to zero in other words non-negative real numbers non-negative reals um, because, again, the absolute value is a distance. And distance is not negative. You can have distance of 0. You could have distance of pi. You could have distance of square root of 2. You could have distance of 12 feet, whatever. But you can't have distance of negative 12 feet. Okay. Um, create a graph of this function. So let's create a graph of f of x equals absolute value of x, which of course uh, we'll, we'll get to in a second, but we'll just start inputting um, x values. Let's just start with negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, which is uh, y value, s sorry, it's actually f of x, which of course is basically the same, but um, uh, negative absolute value of negative 3 is 3, absolute value of negative 2 is 2, absolute value of negative 1 is 1, absolute value is 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3. So we plot those points, and hopefully this is, as you understand, this, you understand that this is the same um, graph as what we've just done with y equals absolute value of x, except as f of x equals absolute value of x, which of course really isn't any different. Okay, so there's the function. All right. Um, so for letter H, how does uh, the graph of the absolute value function compare to this graph? Okay, letter G. Um, let's go to the next page. So how does this graph of the absolute value function compare to that? Well, they're basically the same thing. Okay, the two graphs are identical. Um, you know, you can essentially replace y with f of x because y is a function of x. That's what that's saying. So um, they are identical. Okay. Define a function whose graph would be identical to the graph y equals x minus 5. 
that's easy, f of x equals x minus 5. Absolute value, of course. Okay. Um, all right, in letter J, could you define a function whose graph would be identical to the graph of x equals absolute value of y? And that's a tricky one. All right, and unfortunately, that is not a function, so you can't define a function whose graph would be like that. The graph x equals absolute value of y does not meet the definition um, of a function. Um, if it were if it were a graph of a function, it would be the set of order pairs. Um, it just it just it's it's just not a function. Okay, I mean, I don't know. You, you, you pretty much, the, bottom, the, the problem is if we're defining it as a function, it means it has to have um, um, a, a y value, uh, one y value for the x values. And as we saw when we graphed this, um, you know, this is what it looked like. So clearly, um, every x value does not have only one y value. So we can't define it as a function. All right. Um, Trying to think if there's uh, a better way to explain that. Um, yeah, I mean, like I said, if you just think about it, 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 it's not a function because there are repeated y values for each individual x. All right, for example, like I just said, one more, let's just do one more example. Let's just say the x value of 4, okay? Well, the x value of 4 is associated with the y values of negative 4 and positive 4. Um, those are the y values. So, you know, you have this, you have this, and you have these in the same graph. You know, roughly uh, 4, 4, let's just say, is right there. 4, negative 4 is right there. Okay, they, they fail the vertical line test, um, i.e., it's, it's not a function. Uh, the, y, um, the x value of 4 has two y values. Okay. All right, last but not least, we're going to do this little piecewise uh, bit here. All right. Sheesh, um, this is... All right, we're going to keep trucking on. Um, bear with me here, okay? I know this video is long, and I'm going to be working on these to try and make them as short as possible, okay? We got only a little bit more, so just bear with me because I want to be able to do the homework tomorrow with, <coughs> with you guys in class. Um, and, and we really can't do the homework if we don't get through this last part. All right, so real quick. We're talking about a piecewise function here. We got f, f sub 1 of x is negative x. Uh, and f sub 2 of x is, is, is positive or is, is uh, x for x is greater than or equal to 0. So real quick, okay, um, f of 1 is going to be this. I'm just going to plot it because I, wa I want to get through this quickly, okay. This is f of 1, um, f, f sub 1, because uh, when, when you, let's just say we we plug in, it's it's only negative x's, so let's just say negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, uh, I'm sorry, we can't, so th those three negatives, okay, well, y is the negation of negative 3, so it's going to be 3, and the negative negative 2 is 2, okay, and negative negative 1 is 1, so you end up with this f sub 1, and then f sub 2 is this, okay, because it's just x, and it's for a positive x values. So you got 0 uh, uh, and equal to 0. So 0, 1, 2, 3, et cetera. And, of course, the y is just the same. So you get this um, f sub 2. So basically this is a piecewise function when graphed. We actually get something that is identical to an absolute value. So what they say down here is the absolute value function is defined by f of x equals absolute value of x for all real numbers. Another way to write the function is express it as a piecewise function um, using negative x and x as as uh, shown there okay all right um, another and here's another example showing you that an absolute value is really just two pieces 
of, or it's really two lines um, pieced together with uh, limited domains. So this line has a domain of x is less than 5, and the other line has a domain of x is greater than or equal to 5. And together they piece to make um, the other absolute value g of x equals absolute value of x minus 5 that we graphed before. Okay. Okay, now exploratory challenge 2. Um, the floor of a real number x denoted, uh, we'll just call that floor x, is the largest integer not, not greater than x. The ceiling, of a no, the ceiling of a real number x is denoted by ceiling is the smallest integer not, not less than x. The sawtooth of a, num of a positive number is the fractional part of the number that is to the right of its floor on the number line. In general, for a real number x, the sawtooth number of x is the value of the expression x minus uh, floor of x. Each of these expressions can be thought of as functions with domain the set of real numbers. What? So what are they talking about there? Okay, so this is the last bit of the lesson. Um, the floor is the, again, the floor of a real number x denoted by floor of x is the largest integer not greater than x. So let's take a look at 4.8. Okay, what's the floor of 4.8? Well, the floor of 4.8 is the largest integer not greater than 4.8. What's the largest integer not greater than 4.8? 4. Okay, um, now the ceiling is the opposite. The ceiling is, as shown, um, uh, the ceiling here is the smallest integer not less than not less than x. So for 4.8, what's the smallest integer not less than 4.8? 5. Okay. Now the sawtooth, which we'll talk about why it's called the sawtooth in a second. Um, actually, more like in a minute. But the sawtooth is the floor. Sorry, the number 4.8 minus the floor, which of course is 0.8. Okay. Um, now, negative 1.3, okay, so we'll do this real quick. The floor of negative 1.3 is negative 2. The floor of 2.2 is 2. The floor of 6 um, is 6. The floor of 6 is 6 because uh, there's, there's, nothing, there's no decimal. Um, we're going to the nearest integer. The floor of negative 3 is negative 3. Now, negative 2 thirds. That one's tricky. Okay, negative two-thirds is negative 0.6 repeating. If you want to think of it as a number, it might be easier for you uh, as a decimal. But negative two-thirds repeating, uh, sorry, negative 0.6 repeating, the closest uh, integer that's smaller than that is negative 1. And, of course, pi, the closest integer is 3. Likewise, the ceiling, 5, negative 1, 3, 6, negative 3, 0, 4. Okay. Um, the sawtooth is the difference. Okay, um, so that's going to be 0 0.8, 0 0.7 here because uh, we're taking negative 1.3. Yep, we're taking negative 1.3 and subtracting negative 2. Okay, and that's going to equal 0 0.7. This one's 0 0.2. 0, 0 for these, of course, and um, this one's one third, and this last one is uh, pi minus 3, which, of course, is in itself irrational. But, anyways, uh, there's those values, and now the last bit of the lesson is graphing these. Okay, um, I'd like to do this in class tomorrow. I feel like the video has been over a little bit too long, so we will do this in class tomorrow. All right, uh, we'll start with this bit tomorrow, do it for about five to ten minutes, and then we'll work on the homework in class. Okay? Um, thanks. Have a nice, have a nice night.